Lighthouse is a rare film. Getting a national release, although in limited theaters, it is nevertheless an art house horror film that is somehow getting an audience, getting acceptance, and possibly even awards consideration. Inspired by real life events that took place at the Smalls Lighthouse in Wales, the movie is a downward spiral of claustrophobic insanity set at one of the most desolate feeling locations on the planet. Before we go on, I think it's important to mention this is not a review of the movie. This is a deconstruction of its major themes. As such, if you haven't seen the film, you may want to stop here. There will be significant spoilers ahead. But to get a small amount of review out of the way right up front, go see it. It's awesome. One of the best of the year, in fact. But it's not for everyone, and it's certainly not a film with mainstream appeal. The story focuses on a character named Ephraim Winslow, or seems to. But let's take a moment before we even go any further. The name Winslow is important, because in Old English, the name had a meaning. And that meaning is a friend's burial mound. That will become increasingly important as it becomes a literal manifestation on screen. Ephraim starts a new job at a lighthouse with an old lighthouse keeper named Thomas Wake. That name is not coincidence either. It's also worth mentioning that the film is shot in an extremely tight 1-19-1 ratio aspect. It gives a narrow point of view to all the action. And that's important because the film does have a very narrow perspective. Also, it's in black and white. And although the last thing you'd call the film's plot is black and white, it does serve to show a duality, a light and a dark side to every image, which itself is central to understanding the film. As the days or weeks go by, it's not clear, in fact, the characters openly ask the question about how much time has passed. Winslow reveals that he is not Winslow at all. He's actually Tom. So now we have two characters named Tom. Or Dewey. There's a lot to digest here. We have the probable murder of the former lighthouse keeper's helper. The very role that Winslow, now Tom, is serving. We also have the question of what's happening at the light itself. An area that young Tom is not allowed to see. And then there's the seagulls who play an almost supernatural role antagonizing and taunting young Tom. Ultimately, he loses his cool by murdering a seagull very violently on screen. This is a critical sequence. Up to this point, there was an opportunity for a story of redemption. But at the point where the seagull is killed, that becomes an impossibility and the film careens into an absolute tragedy. Along the way, we also see plenty of sexualized images of mermaids growing in intensity and explicitness as the film goes on. So, is young Tom losing his mind? No. Young Tom lost his mind way before this film began. In fact, he lost his mind when he committed his first murder. Lighthouse is a film about the truth. And it's about how damaging the truth can be. Characters are constantly both repelled and attracted to the truth. Old Tom spends plenty of stories of seafaring legend, all obviously false. While young Tom gives a false identity and a whole false backstory, all the lies at the beginning of the film start to decay as we get closer and closer to the truth. But at the same time, young Tom is becoming more and more violent. You should start to understand that you're really watching a film that only has one character. Two actors playing one character, both named Tom. So what has happened here? Well, there's plenty of clues and insinuation, and while we never get a concrete version of exactly what happened before the film began, this is what can be pieced together. Young Tom, the only Tom, murdered a woman, possibly his wife or a girlfriend, in a jealous sexual rage. And he flees, not just physically across the land to take a job at the seashore, but also in his mind. He creates an all-new persona for himself, both in service of getting a job and starting a new life, and to hide from himself what he's done. He fetishizes a small statue of a mermaid. This is his way of remembering his former love. At the certain time, he tells the story of another murder that occurred. He calls it an accident, but when he tells the story of his former logging boss getting buried under logs, he's really discussing the second murder the one in which he took his revenge on his wife or girlfriend's lover. This is also represented in the story of the previous lighthouse helper, who was murdered by old Tom. Again, Tom is Tom, one Tom. 
At a key moment, we see the two men dancing. They grow closer, going from quick folk dance to a slow embrace. Finally, the two men almost kiss. This is critical because this is the moment when young Tom is about to forgive himself for his past. And yet, that's not what he does. He pushes old Tom away. He reacts badly. And that moment solidifies that the tragedy, already underway, has to come to a crashing, horrible conclusion. The light of the lighthouse itself represents pure truth. When young Tom, only Tom, finally makes it up the light, he looks deep into it. And it's an interesting play on Nietzsche. Instead of looking into the darkness, into the void, he looks into pure light, realizes who and what he is, and immediately collapses away down a flight of stairs, literally spiraling to his death. The final image of him as Prometheus being eaten by seagulls suggests that confronting the truth led him to this last, permanent solution to his problem of guilt. There's a lot more to this movie, and I've only touched the surface here. That is mostly in part the fact that I've only seen the film once. It will be interesting to revisit this film in time and see if more evolves out of my reading. But in the meantime, leave a comment below and let me know what you saw when you looked into the light at the top of the lighthouse.